All right, here we go. Salute to Knicks Nation. Sunday night edition of Knicks Fan TV Live presented by Manscaped. Another edition of Knicks Weekly, the weekly recap show where we go through the week that was for the orange and blue, the good, the bad, the ugly, player of the week, stat of the week, sound bites, and look ahead to the following week for the New York Knicks fan. CP the franchise here, Al Sotaros, the to cast of JD Sports Talk in the building. If you're a diehard Knicks fan, if you're a diehard basketball fan, number one show for the fans by the fans without question. Hit that subscribe button below and the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Knicks go one and uh, one and three this week. Win over the Clips and then uh, three tough losses, man. Three tough losses for the Orange and Blue in Cleveland, in Miami, in Milwaukee. Looking for a bounce back week, but uh, a lot transpiring, a lot of moving parts. A lot of rumbling, so we're going to get into all of that, man. Let's get into it right now. So to everybody in the chat, once again, hit that thumbs up button for you boys. All right, fellas. Um, one and three this week. You know, you, you had a, uh, a a nice win over the Clippers, where we saw RJ and Julius both co- combine for close to 50 points. Both scoring over 20 points, was with, which was refreshing. Then you had a, a tough loss in Cleveland. You know, down 15, come back, tie the game up, and lose by uh, two or three points. And then in the last two, you get, you get your doors blown off, man. Al, Al, I'll start with you. What were your key takeaways from this week? Man, offensive inconsistency <laughs> that's my biggest takeaway from this week yeah. everyone was just struggling just to feel like just to get into rhythm it was just i don't know man watching this team you could just see there's just like a disconnect with everybody on the court to a certain degree you see the young guys you see quentin grimes and Manuel quickly rj barrett getting after it you see julius randall is struggling mitch is doing well when he's out there uh apparently only mitchell robinson if mitchell robinson's in neurons Noel can't be in and vice versa so I don't know, man. It's really just the the offense. Looking at this offense and just like the the, the lax on defense when you have all the starters out there. It's just at this point, I you know, I, I when I watch you guys for post game and I listen to JD. JD says it all the time. It's template coaching from Tom Thibodeau as well, mm-hmm. and we just keep running through the same motions every single game, using the same veterans, same starting lineups, same rotations, and we see that there's no difference at all. And it feels like at this point, why are we doing the same thing over and over and again? just to see no result. You know, Jeff Van Gundy said it right when we were, when we played the Miami heat, you know, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. You'd yeah. think that Tom Thibodeau would have heard his boy say that and then be like, you know what? He's got a point there. Let me, let me, you know, tinker with the lineup a little bit, maybe pull out the veterans old uh, sooner in the starting in the first quarter and see what happens, bringing manual quickly in, but nope, just the same stuff. That that's honestly my biggest takeaway from this week. Yeah. Uh, JD, how you feeling, man? Uh, I'm feeling much better today. Than, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yo, we had it lit on Friday, bro. I saw that. <laughs> the Friday watch along was on fire. So to everybody that came through, man, uh, Knicks Bucks uh, watch along this week. We got some more West Coast watch along coming up this week. So definitely make sure you guys are tuning in. Yeah, I'm, I'm much more calm. I'm relaxed. <laughs> I'm back to calm, cool, collected JD. Uh, so <laughs> hey, Friday night, uh, man. It's a long week. It's a happy hour. It was a happy hour vibe, man. No worries. Exactly, exactly. So, uh, I mean, big takeaway. It's a it's a disappointing um, week, and I think a lot of the things that happened this week uh, was things that we were anticipating um, in terms of some of our concerns from a team standpoint. A um, couple things. One, the level of competition increased. And so while, you know, that's a good thing. I I always like playing good teams because it gives you a very good evaluation Mm -hmm. of where you are and where you need to go. And I think in a weird way, it's actually good that it's happening now because the trade deadline's coming up soon. Yeah. And so you didn't want to play actually a soft schedule and kind of get blinded by some things. I think it's a good time that we're playing some of these teams now. And I think it's very evident 
to the front office, to Nick fans, some of the weaknesses of this team and what they need to do, maybe if they're going to go aggressive at the trade deadline or long term. And, you know, I continue to say, you know, that starting lineup is too slow. It's unathletic. Um, there is no cohesiveness right now with this team. And even though we have some names on the roster, point guard continues to be the issue uh, of this team. And, you know, one of the concerns to me is is Julius Randle. Um, I think this Knicks franchise right now is at a very pivotal point, specifically Leon Rose, who is the head guy of this whole operation. I think he is in – I think right now is this the first time that Leon Rose, since he's been here, I think this is the first time he's feeling a little bit of pressure mm -hmm. in terms of what do I do now? Because when he came in, everything was all good and roses. You know, whenever you hire a new GM, a new front office, you have that honeymoon stage. Uh, a lot of people were on board with the plan. I still think people are, you know, can be on board with the plan. But this trade deadline is going to be his first real, you know, date where people are really anticipating to see what's the direction this franchise is going to go. So to me, it's a combination of, we're learning what the weaknesses are of this roster and going forward. Now we're at the end of the month. The next time they play is February. Uh, what the Knicks will do, you know, as we head into the trade deadline. Yeah, true and true indeed. So to everybody in the chat, once again, hit that thumbs up button for you boys. I would say a couple of my takeaways from this week. We did go one and three. I thought we easily could have went two and two if we executed better down the stretch in that Cleveland game. I thought that Cleveland game was there for the taking. Cleveland really didn't do much to, uh, you know, despite the the Kevin Love outburst in the third, you know, they really didn't do too much to uh, to close us out. I just thought that we are our inexperience, um, lack of cohesion in our closing lineup, bad decision making. I think by Julius, and just 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 not crisp, you know, executing cost us that game. I thought the Cleveland game was definitely winnable. You saw some encouraging things. Obviously, you know, the Clipper game was a win. You saw RJ and Julius both score over 20 points. I think in the case of RJ, who is this week's player of the week, if we were going to name one, you know, it, it's another strong outing, strong week for RJ, man. 23 points per game, 6.5 rebounds per game, three dimes, four dimes, damn near, 45% from three this week. And uh, got to the free throw line again, seven attempts. So RJ continuing to be aggressive, continuing to attack the rim, finding his teammates a lot better. And I thought overall, you know, yeah, despite the, the, the results, the results certainly weren't there. But from an individual performance, I thought RJ had some good moments. You know, definitely had some good moments and had some good moments when, when Julius was out of the game. You know, in particular in that Cleveland game, we saw, you know, to close out the third, early fourth, it was RJ was quitting Grimes. You saw RJ in, in the second quarter against Milwaukee Bucks get more into his comfort zone when, when Julius was out of the game. And the key is, how do we get both of them on at the same time consistently? As you said, right, what are we, uh, five games, six games where they both scored over 20 points? You know, we're 50 games into the season. These, these, this is your two-headed monster. You want to see more out of that. But uh, a lot of that is is Julius. You know, that's my second take. It, he's, he's a shell of himself. And, and we'll get to Julius more in depth later on in the show. But just performance-wise and statistically, he's just not there. You know, on another uh, week where he's got single digits and points, he's now at six games this year in single digits, where he was at one last year. So that's not good. The turnovers, the decision making, not there. Just just lack of days ago. You know, started the Bucks game bobbling the ball, you know, on drives. And just again, just just not crisp. Heat game, he was dominated. So th that's a huge question mark. Where is Julius Randle? Uh, I'll go back to the plus side. I'll go Quentin Grimes. Quentin Grimes quickly becoming a a favorite of this coach. This coach has been glowing about Quentin Grimes. Uh, for a while now, said he, he said, I love Quentin Grimes. That's what Tib said about Grimes. And what's there not to love? Because he's come in as advertised as as, as a tenacious defender and, and a uh, and a solid three-point shooter. And I think in, in most of these games, the Cleveland game is the one that sticks out. You know, Knicks found themselves down 13 to close out that third quarter. Quentin Grimes' back-to-back -back threes cut the lead to seven. He ends up closing that game. 
and I thought he should have had some more opportunities to score. I liked how he played in the Bucks game, especially given the fact that the second time they played the Bucks, the one at the Garden, you know, Chris Middleton was kind of schooling him a little bit. And in this game, you know, you could tell Grimes, either he looked at the film or his adjustments were just a lot better. You know, he was on his feet more, wasn't going for the head fakes, had a block shot on Middleton, and I thought he had a strong second quarter at the very least. And I was looking for him to kind of close that game in the fourth, you know, when, when things were getting out of control. And then lastly, I would say defensively, you know, in the last show, we talked about how this Nick defense has been coming along as of late, you know, trending on the up and ups. But was, is that a, was that a result of, you know, being opportunistic, playing teams that were kind of shorthanded, kind of going in and out of the COVID protocol? Because last week just, or this past week rather, just just wasn't crisp. You know, 123 points to the, to the champs. Uh, I think 110 to Miami. Cleveland game, all right, they gave up 98 points, but then they gave up 110 to the Clippers. So, you know, things got to tighten up. Obviously, with our offense being inconsistent, we got to be able to rely on our on our defense. And this week took a bit of a step back. We kind of kind of, you know, a lot. Both well, three of these teams: the Clippers, the Heat, and the uh, and the Bucks, all scoring over their season average against the Knicks. So definitely have to tighten up there. And then as we pivot into this into the stat of the week, JD free throws. We got to hit our free throws, man, because. I got the wrong. I got the wrong stat. Oh, hang on. Got to hit our free throws, man. Hold on, I got the wrong graphic. Go. All right, let me let me get back to that. But either way, our free throw shooting has been abysmal. I'm gonna pull up the numbers in a second. We're 25th in the league in free throw percentage, and uh, you just can't win too many games that way, bro. When when you're looking for consistency, one of the things we get to the line seventh in the league in free throw attempts, but we just can't convert, bro. Go, go ahead on the on the free throws. Yeah, you know, the the Knicks, uh, in, when you look at it from a month-to-month, um, you know, standpoint, the Knicks in, in November were at 78%. That was good for 13th in the league. Uh, December, they were again at 78%, 78.3. Again, 13th in the league. And in January this month, they are at 68%. That was 30th in the league. And just this month, they've missed 104 free throws and and to put it into into even more contests when you start looking at you know this is a, this is a weekly recap but this is the end of the month as well so when you start to look at just this month games like at home against the pacers 104 94 loss in that game Knicks missed eight free throws home against the pelicans 102 91 loss in that game the Knicks missed 12 free throws at the Cavs was a tight 95 93 loss in that game, the Knicks missed 10 free throws. Against the Wolves, we were at that game, CP and Alex. 112-110 uh, 1, loss. In that game, the Knicks missed nine free throws. Home against the Hornets, 97-87 loss. I know the final score there didn't really say how the game went, but still, you missed 10 free throws in that game. Yeah. And then last game against the Bucks, again, 123-108 loss, but there were points in the game where the Knicks were right there. Right within four points, within two points, the Knicks missed 12 free throws. So just in those six games this month, that's a total of 62 missed free throws for the New York Knicks. And, you know, <laughs> I know free throws is, is, a, is a fundamental uh, aspect of, of basketball, um, but you're not going to win many games um, when, when you're shooting that way. And that's one, I think one of the underrated underlying reasons why the Knicks have had such a tough month. Their record this month is six and eight and they've lost, I believe now it's five or six of the last seven. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, those are putrid numbers and, and, you know, next starting this game against the Kings, they better, better start making some free throws. I don't know at this point how you improve on it because some of those free throws misses are, you know, important players on the roster. And I always say those things are sometimes tough to improve in season, more of an off season um, type of thing, but they have to try to shoot better from the line. Yeah, absolutely, man. Lost six out of the last seven, six out of their last seven games and, and free throws. They're free. You got to make them. And some of the guys it's been uncharacteristic, you know, uh, Burks, 
missing one, you know, going one or two. RJ, one night he goes seven for seven, next night he goes five for ten. Julius, forget about it, especially in the clutch, forget about it. So, uh, Al, your, your take on the free throw woes? I think it comes down to focus. I think it comes down to just staying in rhythm. I think those are the two biggest things when it comes down to the free throw shooting. And as you guys already point out, like we can get to the line. Like, that's not the issue, especially mm-hmm. when it comes to Randall and uh, RJ. Those guys can easily get to the line. These guys get hacked and whacked like there's no like there's no tomorrow. Mm-hmm. But you got to be able to knock them down, and I don't know what it was. Like, last season, we were hitting our free throws at a good clip, and the fact that it's just dropped so dramatically, you know, like we, we know that Mitch is, is going to miss it, but when it comes to, like, Randall and guys who were shooting, like, white, year, like white years, like, out of this world last season, same thing with RJ and RJ started to pick it up. He's shooting 70% mm-hmm. uh, this past four games over 70% from the, the line, but it's tough, man. These are the things that you need to do in order to win games. As JD just pointed out, going down those entire games, especially the one that we were at for the Minnesota Timberwolves. If mm-hmm. we were hitting those shots, even against the Cleveland Cavaliers, you talk about a win. This is the, this is the, this is the small stuff that good teams work on and continuously work on so that way they can win games in the clutch. And that just make that's the difference between a well-prepared team, which it's shocking because that's what Tom Thibodeau has been, you know, known for having his teams ready in all types of situations. And to see it come down to free throws late in games or just even throughout the entire game, that's unacceptable, especially when you're in a more competitive East, you're trying to, you know, build on last season after making the four seed. Sure. You know, at the beginning of the season, we all said that, you know, we weren't going to expect four seed, maybe fifth, sixth seed best because the East did get better. But the fact that you're the fact that you can't hit these free throws at Norris State in these games. And on top of that, then it just adds on to the other part of their play, right? When they're not getting back on defense, when they're just being when they're not doing really anything on offense to be creative, no off ball screens, no cutting, yeah. not looking for back doors. It just keeps adding up and adding up to just this woe, the woes on offense. Bang. And you're not, you're not going to get anything going as a team. You're not going to be able to compete. And then when you were saying that the identity last season was defense, if you can't even hang your hat on that and you can't show up for offense, this is where you have a team that doesn't have an identity. They're lost. And that's why we're in the situation that we're in right now. That's exactly why we're in the situation that we're in. And as you spoke on the adjustments, you know, Fournier kind of called out Tibbs on that after the Miami game, you know, uh, of, of our lack of adjustments and, and with the pieces that we have, we should be playing better. I think he also called out some players as well, you know, to just be able to adjust uh, to what the defense is, is giving us. So, like I always say, man, that's something that if, if Tibbs is going to be on here going forward next season and, and beyond, he's, he needs an offensive coordinator, bro. We, we got to get more creative and because we, we're not crisp offensively we're not crisp inbounding the ball we're not crisp after the timeout you know we're, we're just not executing out there and and be before I, I say something on, on on that remark on Tibbs uh just quickly on on the free throw thing you know sometimes it, you know because fans may ask okay so how do we fix this like how, like do we need to ch- all, of, all of a sudden change players um mm-hmm. do we need to just you know do we trade Mitch because Mitch is not a great free throw shooter? Uh, like, w- what's the root of the problem here? And and looking at this roster right now, um, I mean, you you Kemba, I saw miss some free throws. That's a little uncharacteristic. He's up there in the eighties. Yeah. Um, quickly even missed a few free yeah, throws quickly. this month. He's Burks. in the nineties. So when you start to really look at it, I'm looking at one player, um, and and it's just to hold them accountable. I'm looking at R.J. Barrett um, because he's a player that you want to be a part of your future. And so that's going to be an area that he needs to improve. He shot 67% this month. He missed 29 free throws this month, right? In in Nick wins, he's shooting 74%. In Nick losses, he's shooting 65% from the free throw line. That, that may look like not a lot, 9% difference. That's a big difference in the result of a win or a loss when you're looking at close games. Um, so, you know, he it, that's something that, I'm hoping he can continue to improve in the off season. But if he's not, we've seen players for whatever reason, like a LeBron James, right? Who all the years we thought he would get up there. He just, LeBron re- never really became a great free throw shooter. So RJ's really going to have to hone in on that skill 
because if he can't get better from the free throw line, I mean, if he just becomes a 76% free throw shooter, yeah, he's, he's already a 20 last points. Year. Yeah, like if if he can get that consistently, he's he's going to be pushing twenty points per game just on that. Yeah, and so um, that's something that I, I'm hoping that he can hone in because it's going to be a very important part of of his development. You know, I just talked about LeBron. You know, <laughs> that has done anything to LeBron's career because of his other, you know, skill sets. RJ doesn't have those skill sets. RJ's not that fast. RJ's not that athletic. RJ's not that strong. So when you're looking at a player that has physical limitations, you have to look at certain areas of your game where you can have an advantage that you can control, that you can improve. The free throw line is an area that that he has, he can control and can improve his game. And to Tom Thibodeau, you know, listen, we don't know. So I don't want to say that, you know, because I can I can say that he doesn't listen to his uh, his assistant coaches. I don't know that. I can't say that. But what I can say is what I see. And when I look around the NBA, you know, CP and Alex, if you look some, you know, most of the teams, when they call a timeout, you see the whole coaching staff. They walk away from the bench and they kind of team up and they yeah. talk and mm-hmm. then they go mm-hmm. into the bench and talk to the team. We see that a lot. I don't see that much here with the Knicks. Uh, another observation is especially with like Greg Popovich. He has Becky Hammond. Jason Kidd does that a lot. Frank Vogel has done that a lot. Sometimes they call a timeout and they'll have an assistant coach draw up the actually plays. run the timeout or yeah, draw yeah. the plays or show the team, this is what we're going to run. I don't see that here with the Knicks. To me, what it's, I it's see Tibbs show, man. is Tibbs. Tibbs is Tibbs, yeah. Tibbs, Tibbs. Tibbs runs the timeouts. Nobody's really huddling up after a timeout. So, again, I don't want to say that he doesn't listen to his assistant coaches. Maybe he runs it differently. Maybe Mm -hmm. before the game is where everybody talks, and then once the game is on, Tibbs runs the show. But I'm just saying, don't want to say, but, you know, you see the habits, you see the evidence, and you it opens it up for speculation in terms of how flexible, because that's been a criticism of him in terms of stubbornness versus flexibility. So maybe the Knicks, you know, not maybe, the Knicks knew me some type of offensive emphasis. Um, and because the evidence is also there, not only the observations I just finished describing, look at the out of timeout plays, as you mentioned. We have to be the worst team. Terrible, bro. Terrible. Even inbounding passes. Yeah. For, forget mm-hmm. the play that's it's, run. It's How about struggle. getting the ball on the court? Just getting the we ball can't even do that. So, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. you know, it's, it's frustrating, but. You know, let's see what happens here uh, in the second half. <laughs> King Deej in the chat said, Divey for Ivy. So that's that's a new one. Jaden Ivy getting the uh, the buzzer beater lifting Purdue over Ohio State today. That, that was a pretty uh, pretty good game. I got a chance to watch a little Jaden Ivy uh, today. So sh- salute to King Deej. Salute to everybody in the chat. Once again, hit that thumbs up button for you boys. Knicks weekly presented by Manscaped. Make sure you guys support our sponsors, man. Go to manscaped.com and the promo code KFTV for 20% off plus free shipping. We're recapping the week that was for the Knicks, the good, the bad, the ugly. We will take your phone calls. Call us up 657-383-1509 if you want to talk about anything, man. Knicks, the trade rumors, this, that, and the third. You can also hit us up on the Knicks Fan TV Discord. So uh, we will get to your phone calls in just a little bit now we talked about the week that was we, we and and in the topic of tibs and adjustments the big topic this week was tibs in the rotation and one cam reddish and the, the trade <laughs> deadline so and how you laugh right so here was oh man Tibbs, after the Milwaukee game, on cam, why he didn't play, and and looking looking forward. Here, here's what here's what Tibbs had to say here. Everything was discussed, you know. We, we like we like who he is. We like the, the talent. And right now, you know, it is it, it's a long season. We knew we were, you know, we traded someone who wasn't in the rotation. So you're not you can't keep adding to without taking someone out, you know, or you have injuries. So you just have to be patient and work our way through it. Thank you. Thanks, Coach. Yep, thank you. All right, Al. Well, if, 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 if you didn't know, 
You know, some people might have thought I wrote that speech for tips. You know, <laughs> ba- based, I mean, did you? Did based, you? On, based on what I've been saying, you, you might have thought so, I wrote that speech for him. CAA TV in full effect. You know what I mean? <laughs> you you might have thought he was watching the show on Friday before he went to go address the media. Because this is what I've been saying with the Reddit situation. We have to wait and see it play out. Now, fans don't like that out because we're losing they're impatient. They want to see the shiny new thing. I get it. I get over it. I want to see him too. You know what I'm saying? However, <laughs> the business side of things, I sound like a broken record, but it's true. And as the coach just relayed, the business side of things has to play out. I'm a guy, out with this regime, with this coach, I give them time to get their stuff together before I'm ready to just... Haul everybody out of here. You got a lot of Knicks fans on Twitter, Instagram. Get Tibbs out of here. Get this guy out of here. Get it. I wait and see. I'm, I'm more patient than most. This is a new regime. This is a new coach. I give him a little bit of leeway until I see reason to do otherwise. Now, as he said, there's a rotation right now. We have a log jam at certain positions. We understand the talent that is here. We made the trade for that. As he said, we got to wait and see how things play out. Translation, wait until the trade deadline. The report came out that they're trying to trade some vets. I personally think that I would put in this order, I think Burks is at the top of the list to go, and I would say Kemba second. There's speculation about Julius. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but I think Burks, I think Kemba. Now, people would say, Bench these guys now. We already know what they have. We already know who, who, who they are. When you, In my perspective, if you're making a trade, if you're trying to trade these guys, you want to play them. You still got pro personnel scouts at NBA games watching players. How are they playing? How are they moving? How do they fit in my system? Oh, he's injured. How's he moving on that leg? How's he interacting with so-and-so? How's he doing with the bench? These guys are still being evaluated. So to put your assets on the bench so that nobody can see them, I don't think you're serving yourself well. Yes, it's they're not playing well right now. But I, you're still trying to showcase them because some of these guys you're trying to deal. Now, after the trade deadline, we'll see what happens. If this team is still going south and we're not implementing more of these kids, then I'm going to say, all right, something is wrong here. But for right now, from my perspective, which is echoed by Tibbs, you got to let the process play out. Your thoughts, sir. (laughs) Your thoughts. So I agree with a lot of what you said. I would not give it that far. Once a trade deadline comes and we see who's here, I need Cam in that rotation, in all honesty. I, I can't I can't wait that long just to see what we got in Cam, just because at this point, the way the season's going, I, fight for a plan and then what? Like, what are, we, what are we storing him for? I'd rather see him play and get minutes that way we know who he is as a player and what he needs to work on moving forward going into next season. But I totally agree with you. You got to play the guys that you have on this roster. So, I, I'm I'm surprised they didn't add Evan Fournier in there uh, to that list. I would expect I don't know in any order, but Burks, Kemba, Fournier, you know, as uh, Windhorse reported, those guys are on the block. As as you mentioned as well, Randall, and we're going to save that for later. But those guys definitely are. Kemba has to be moved, whether that's trade or or you, or you waive him. Uh, Burks is probably going to be traded, so you're going to try to play him, increase his value, so that way you can try to get like a Marcus Morris deal and try to get a late round first if you can, because he's a valuable bench player on another team. Uh, you saw Philly trade trade for him when he went from uh, the Warriors to Philly and when he was in the bubble. And then Fournier is a useful player too, and I think he could go to another team, especially a team that like maybe I don't know the Sacramento Kings, who it's difficult to get valuable uh, role players out there and veterans. You may he may be in a trade deal that goes out to there, uh, but yeah. Those guys need to get moved. I think at this point, you got to start seeing what we got in the young kids. In all honesty, I don't know what the value, like what's the value of this season to get a play in. I'm not even confident that this team can even win one playing game if they were either seven or eight and get into the playoffs. Yeah. So at this point, I would just say rip off the band aid and just start playing the young guys and let's see what we got. Yeah. You know, that's how you're just going to build the future. The more minutes these guys get on the court, the more valuable it is for them. It's also sure. more valuable information for the front office as well. Hey, 
is quickly a point guard or not. Okay, maybe we need to go into this draft and go get a point guard. Hey, can Obi handle more minutes? Well, we saw against Toronto in a uh, in, in a in a bad situation that he couldn't handle. It, but hey, let's try it again and see what happens. Was Cam Reddish can do? It? Can does Cam Reddish have game besides doing a, a bad step back jumper that we can hear Jeff Van Gundy complaining about all day long? So we want to see how he fits into the rotation as well, and we need to know that way we could say, hey, we need another guy, maybe another wing depth. Who knows what Quentin Grimes can be? Is he just a three and D guy that you bring off the bench, or is he someone you want in the starting rotation? As of right now, we want him in the starting rotation over certain guys, but we got to figure out what type of roles these guys have. So I'd say by the trade deadline, who's here, who's not, I, I'm just ready to to move it, move with the the youth at that point. Because at that, like I said, what are we what are we gaining from this season? Just trying to get a play in, not even sure if this team will win the play in, yeah. and then going to next season saying, all right, now we can start the young guys, and then we have Cam Reddish for one year, and then that's just one year that we have to evaluate him, and then have to make a quick decision saying oh we got to pay this guy now and we know how players are in their contract year so i would just say rip that band-aid off as soon as possible and see what you got especially in cam reddish jd cp cp can you do me a favor Mm -hmm. uh can you rerun that tibbs uh snippet please let's rerun the snippet so to everybody in the chat once again hit that thumbs up button for you boys you guys just listen closely to this snippet. Just listen right. closely to the words. Everything was discussed. You know, we, we like we like who he is. We like the, the talent. And right now, you know, it is it, it's a long season. We knew we were you know we traded someone who wasn't in the rotation. So you're not you can't keep adding to without taking someone out. You know, or you have injuries. So you just have to pay, be patient and work our way through it. He okay. said. It's a long season. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. It's a long season. Do you remember um, when Tom Thibodeau said, you know what they say? When it's 10 games, you say you need 20. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When you get to 20, you say you need 30. And you get to 30, you say 40. And then before you know it, the season's over. So it's a bunch of bleep. Hmm. What changed? Oof. What changed from that mentality to all of a sudden it's a long season in the middle of a rough stretch when you're trying to win? Something changed, right? Kemba's back in the lineup. Uh, you know, Burks is getting starting nods. What changed? Because if it's really about you know, you say 30, you need 40, then how come now all of a sudden it's a long season and we're at the 40, we're, we're past what he said. He said 30, 40, we're past that. <laughs> yeah. So this is what I'm saying where I don't know if who people are on the same page or not. I don't know what's going on, but to me, CP, those two clues tells me something changed in their approach maybe they already are anticipating that this is not a playoff team and you know what let's just play these vets let's see what we can get out of them in the next two weeks and let's see if we can trade them but i go back to this if you're in an organization and Thibodeau says that quote you know against the bucks a game like that do you know that cam reddish in the playoffs shot 52% and 64% from three against that same team played well in four games. So why not give him a few minutes? Maybe you catch lightning in the bottle. This is a player that for whatever reason played well against them. What if he gets hot now, all of a sudden, boom, you sneak out a win team gets rejuvenated and Hey, you can still go on on the down stretch, but you gave a young player some type of confidence by using a situation, using a matchup and say, Hey, you, you played well against them. You know, let's see if you can give us something in 10 minutes. Like, I just don't see why we can't create those situations for Cam Reddish until, you know, the deadline. That's all I'm saying. And to me, it is a disservice as an organization. You're a front office. You talk about this being a business and all that stuff. Fine. If if, If that's the approach, wouldn't it also be prudent to use everybody on your roster before this trade deadline? just to see what fits, if anything, if you can catch some lightning in the bottle, because the starting lineup right now, who is really the person that's going? It's only Kemba. 
I think Kemba, Bur- I think is, Burks can get traded. Yeah, but Burks, Burks is not starting right now. No, he's not starting. He's not starting. So that's what I'm saying. So like, when I look at the rotation, I just think it's is a lot of just. I, I mean, I'm just confused because they they tell me one thing, then they do another, and now it seems like the approach has changed. So just wanted to point that out. I I don't see it's changed at all, bro. I I think he said, like I said, I could have written it myself. Yeah, I would have. Yeah, I would have thought this is this CAA conspiracy going on. Like I sent in the the manuscript. All he's saying, let the thing play out. We got the trade deadline coming up February 10th. If no moves are made, this team is still going south. Then we have a reason to gripe. For now, I feel like he'll get his time. He'll get his due. We'll see what he has. We'll evaluate. And we go forward. That That's how I see it. Now... This trade deadline stuff may not even be to 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 bring to 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 um to get Cam in here. Maybe this is to get Quentin Grimes even more solid, solid rotation minutes because he needs to be a permanent fixture in this rotation. You got D Rose coming back. They said Derrick Rose is is on the way back after the All Star break. You know the pieces got to get moved, bro. Pieces have to get moved, not just for Cam, but to make sure that Quentin Grimes is a permanent fixture in the, in this rotation so like i said i'm taking a patient approach a lot of fans want to see this kid in here yesterday because things are going south i get it but like i said i get the business side of things people say i'm crazy well tip said the same thing call him crazy nba head coach two-time coach how, of the year hey it is how, it is. how soon okay so how soon after the deadline are yeah. you looking at are you looking at because me? You, you saw if you, if you guys tuned in to the to the watch along last. I'm I'm, yeah. I'm the deadline is the tenth, and we play the Warriors yeah. at 10 p.m. that night. I want to see Cam in the game that night because this is all the talk. They're gonna be gone. They better be gone. And that night against the Warriors, I'm looking at that game to see if anything changes because if we play the Warriors that night and Burks is not here. And and Kemba's not here, and Cam is still not getting minutes. Then to me, w- w- like, what did this prove? I would it means say nothing. This. Let's take a look at it. Salute to everybody in the chat once again. Hit that thumbs up button for you boys. Um, the trade deadline is February tenth. Between that time, we got Sacramento tomorrow, which is going to be a very tough game. You got Ja coming into the garden. You know he's going to want to drop fifty. That's going to be an even tougher game at Lakers. At Utah, Denver, back to back. You know those are two L's. At Golden State, that's three losses in a row. Then the then you have to trade deadline that same day, so you could very well be looking at losing at least three out of the next five, most likely four, maybe even five. If it keep going south and this thing is is still status quo, of course you're gonna want to see. Immediate changes. You're going to want to see immediate changes to the rotation. I even said bef- even before they make a trade, I want IQ and Grimes in that starting rotation. After the trade deadline, if, if these guys are still here and they still going south, roll it in. Roll them in. No no questions asked. Because at this point, they're, they're, they're not going anywhere anyway. So if they don't move them, of course you're going to want to see the younger guys getting into it. And getting into the mix, no, no, no question. Al, jump in. Yeah, I just, yeah. No, I was about to say, like, I just needed, like, I'm with JD, and and I watched that so show, and JD, you were on one that night. <laughs> I just gotta say, bro, you are on one that <laughs> night. But I agreed when you said once you said Warriors tenth guys got to play 100, percent and that's how I feel too because it just comes back to we see what this team is. There, not much is going to ch- if Tibbs isn't going to change the rotation. He hasn't tinkered with the rotations to find lightning in a bottle right now. If most of those guys aren't moved mm, by that, I, 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 well, I, I, well, he did start McBride, McBride a couple games, didn't he? Yeah, I'm not saying and that he can't. He, I'm he not saying that. that well, so, oh wait, he, he, McBride, he started McBride over Kemba Walker when most of the guys were hurt, though. Started McBride over IQ too. Started McBride over IQ too. Two games in a row. He's, and where's he, been the pride since? He's he hasn't played well. You go back to him. He how, how many minutes is Quentin Quentin Grimes? I love Quentin Grimes. Isn't that what Tibbs is saying? Quentin Grimes is yeah. getting into the mix. 
Quentin Grimes. Just I know that. The t- mix, bro. I'm not the. I'm not a guy saying that Tibbs is a play his his young kids. Yeah. I'm not a guy that's saying that. I know that Grimes is getting his minutes. I know IQ is getting his minutes, but we're not seeing enough minutes of Obi Toppin. We're not seeing enough minutes of Deuce McBride. I feel like we're watching guys who are in the rotation. I mean, bro, everybody's not going to play. How many coaches? I'm not expecting. I'm not expecting. I'm not expecting everyone to play, but we're watching guys who are just not contributing to winning either. So what are we like? What's the point here then? Like, if we're not seeing any winning and nothing translating at that point, what what is what is the purpose of this then? Like if the purpose is to win games and to build yeah. on last season's success, and we're not even doing that, yeah. Why have Kemba Walker, Evan Fournier, Alec Burks, all these guys in the rotation? I'm, I might yeah. as well just see what everyone is at this point well, and just try to well, get in co- as many may the players as possible. But the, but you gotta understand, bro. The, the coach's goals are different than the fan and the long term goals of the of the organization. The coach is here to survive, my dude. So yeah. until they're mathematically eliminated, he's going to go with what he knows. I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm yeah. saying his approach is going to go I with get that. his soldiers, with his veterans that took him there last year because he's trying to get there again. Because the minute he hands the keys over to the kids and they keep losing, guess what? He's You want him out of here anyway because they're losing. Then Johnny Bryan comes in, he takes these kids, and in two years of losing, guess what? You're going to want him out of there because he's losing. The coach is here trying to survive, bro. He's not trying to be David Fisdale, man. <laughs> that, He's that, trying to know, survive, you know, bro. But you you know what it means then? Because I, I also think, you know, when you start to really break it down, some of the young guys are playing. Um, but I'm in the camp of the way that he's used, utilizing certain players and his substitution patterns within the game. Sure. So when you look at trying to survive, I think it's more, and, and that's true, but I think he has an approach to how he wants to manage the game and how he wants to win. And that is the only approach that he wants to use. In other words, yeah. yes, you know, Grimes is playing and these guys are playing, but it's when they're playing and also feeling the game, coaching the game. You know, Obi comes in, he gives you seven solid minutes, but then you take him out. So that's that's where I'm off in terms of his feel for the game. Because if you would think, you know, these modern coaches, yes, they want to survive, but they're flexible. They adapt. They coach every game differently. For and sure. They allow the feel for the game to dictate how they coach the rest of the game. And I think that's where there's a disconnect between, you know, Tibbs and the way that I'm seeing it is like, Tibbs, don't make it too difficult on yourself. You know, Grimes got to this point because he got the opportunity and you rolled with it. And he took it to, by storm. He forced you to to have him stuck in the rotation. Mm-hmm. Have that approach with some of these other players. You might be surprised. We might get some wins that you don't think. But this whole quickly comes in with two minutes in the first. Obi's coming in at the start of the second and the start of the fourth. You know, uh, Randall's playing all 12 minutes of certain quarters. Like that approach, I don't understand how that is getting you results is not getting you results and i think that's where my disconnect is with, is with the head coach is the way that his approach to the game is not giving him results and he's not changing it as you can see they just asked him today so what starting lineup are you rolling against the kings i'm sticking to the same starting five i think they played a little bit better against the bucks but we got smoked yeah well got i'm still smoked. sticking to them got completely, <laughs> that's got the com- disconnect got completely smoked uh, That's the disconnect, CP. No, I hear you. I, I hear you, you 100%. Know what I, mean? I, I hear you 100%. Um, Al, last point, last point for you, and then and then let, let's get to uh, let's get to the Randall topic. Yeah, I mean, I think the thing just to add on to JD's point is just I think that's really where the frustration comes in is that he's not figuring it out. Just this is where it becomes become, where we need flexibility, right? You look at this team right now. We were last in pace last season. This season, we're still last in pace, and we took a step back. We were 96.32 in pace last season. That's how many points we were averaging, and now we're at 95.48. And Mm -hmm. so you look at that, you're like, hmm, who can I add in here? Granted, we're at Derrick Rose would increase the pace, and we don't have him, so I'm understanding that. But why not try a Deuce McBride? Sure, he he failed against Toronto. Sure, he didn't do well, but that doesn't mean you have to banish him to the bench. Because what has Kemba been doing for you when he has cold stretches? What has anyone else has been doing for you for when he have, they have cold stretches? You, have, you see Evan Fournier. This is where I actually uh, like his, where he sees Evan Fournier struggling, and he brings in Grimes, and he'll ride Grimes. 
But if you see like another a point guard that's struggling, why not try Emmanuel quickly in the starting rotation? Why are we going straight to Alec Burks, who's been struggling this entire time, trying to get anything going and just say, you know what? Let's let's try Let's go back to, to Deuce for a second. Let's see what happens. Mm-hmm. And then if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And you can go back to what you're trying to do. But this is where it just you just need to make adjustments. And, you know, it, I, I, this is this is just the frustrating part, man. And, and I think the other thing is like where it goes back to offensive creativity. And just to wrap it up on this, we see we, we see that we are trying to be a jump shooting team and rely on everyone driving. And we we have that again. Last season we we're a top 10. We're once again top 10, but we're in the bottom, we're in the bottom 10 when it comes to finishing around the finishing, rim yeah. once again off of drives. Mm-hmm. We're we're b- right back where we are. And then if you look at how else we play, we're in the top t- top 10 in isolation we're in top 10 catch and shoot and we're in top 10 when it comes to the ball handler and the pick and roll meaning they're going to take a jump shot instead of looking for the guy rolling we're bottom and man rolling we're bottom and post ups and so you know what this team is trying to be and it's not and yet we're not trying to figure out like we see we just see other guys who can add to this and and it's just why not try it for a split second let's see what we got that that's all that's all i got for for Thibodeau and and this offense and just being just so rigid with the structure that he has all right. So to everybody in the chat, once again, hit that thumbs up button for you boys. Nick's weekly recap show, CP the Franchise, Alex Otaro's JD Sports Talk in the building. Hit that thumbs up button. Hit that subscribe button. 1,800 people in here on the check-in for the Nick's weekly recap show. Let's go. They got finished with the football. So we we, we delayed the show on purpose because the football games were, were going crazy. So just wanted to make sure we had everybody's everybody's attention. CP you know what was I mean? hype on Twitter. <laughs> Hey, listen, man, my, my Giants gave me no joy all year, bro. You know what I'm saying? So to see two good games back to back, it was pretty good, man. Salute to the Bengals. If any Bengals fans is in here, uh, all, all 10 of you, congratulations, man. Because to say that the Bengals are going to the Super Bowl, that's something that I didn't think I was going to hear ever again in my lifetime. But um, shout out Joe Burrow, bro. The, he, he's, he's got that it factor. And I think they, they I think they could take it, man. I definitely think they can take it. San Fran, it's the bed. They're going to be sleepless night 17-7. They blew it, but that's just how it goes, man. That's just how it goes. So to New York, sends a fight out super chat. Melvin Peebles fight out super chat. He says, JD speaking truth. 70 games into the season, Tibbs still going to say it's a long season. Antonio Mano says, do you guys think Knicks acquire camp to have another asset for a bigger deal to ship him out? Uh, right now, no, I don't think so. Not at this moment. I, I think they truly intend to... Uh, play him and, and see how he sticks with this organization. Uh, as Coach said, his, his time is not now. But I think my overall point is that they didn't just trade for him for nothing. I think making that trade, uh, you know, it, it's Leon's team and it's Leon's choice. And if Leon made this trade to, to make sure that he plays so that they can evaluate him and the coach doesn't play him, the coach is going to find himself on an unemployment line fairly soon. So, like I said, I, I think Cam's time will come if Tibbs wants to keep his job. Uh, all right, let's let's move to this Julius thing because as the week is, is gone by and, and things have been going down, you know, obviously Julius has been a hot topic for this team, but it's a lot of film going around about Julius's lack of effort, his lack of defensive hustle, and now it, it, his lack of leadership. You know, you, you're seeing film coming around, guys taking tumbles on the floor, Julius not picking them up. I'm getting... Picture after picture, Julius on the bench, sitting away from the team. Julius doing this, Julius doing that. So I guess, fellas, I'll start with you, JD. Um, has Julius quit on the team, man? Has Julius quit on the team? Oh wow, that's 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 some question. Has he quit on the team? Um, he might have quit on himself, you know, to be honest, because. Um, and then as a result of that, you know, he he's checked out on on. I don't know if I don't know if he's on the team because we're talking about other individuals. You would think he has some relationships with players, but as a result of him just check out checking out, it's just a domino effect to the game, to the team, to everyone else. So I guess that means yes, because that's also a disservice to to your same teammates and the same players you have a relationship with, you know. I, I started to look and I started to look at his career and I'm starting to think that, and this is why, you know, Ian Begley had a great segment and he talked about the Knicks have to figure this out. 
in these next two weeks, man. And that's why I always said, that's why I said Leon Rose has a little bit of pressure here because if you don't find a solution by the trade deadline, that means is this behavior, are we going to accept that for the second half? Are we going to continue to enable, you know, some of this behavior? Are we going to continue to see nine of the last 10 games? He hasn't talked to the media. I thought that stars, you know, you speak to the media so that other players on your team don't have to. You don't put other players in those positions. R.J. Barrett now seems to be the leader. He seems to be the lead guy talking to the media and having to face some of these tough questions after these tough losses. He's coming on some of these post games, probably mentally. Like these guys, these players, and that's the other thing. These players will never say it because they're professionals. They'll never say it. But listen, I never played professional basketball, but I played high school basketball. I played ball in college. And trust me, if I was in that situation, I still may respect Julius Randle because I'm his teammate. But in my mind, I'm thinking, yo, I just scored 22 points tonight. I was a plus six, and I'm over here answering these tough questions. And this guy over there was a minus 30, and he's dodging the media. You think that's going to sit well with me? Nine of the last 10 games? So I don't know how that increases the morale in the locker room. I have no idea why you dodge the media in the middle. And I understand we were winning games. Like if you mentioned, you space it out here and there, mm. but this is the most critical point of the season. And in this point is when you're just checking out on us. How is, so we're going to accept this after the deadline. If we don't move it, how is, how is that positive for the development of these young players? Why would you want that around McBride and Grimes yeah. and Cam Reddish who has motor questions? I mean, Ken Reddish has questions about, you know, that motivation, that drive. And you want him to see Julius Randle do that? Yeah. So I look at, and my last point with this is this. I think it's the pressure. That's why I say he's not built for New York. Don't forget, guys, Julius, this thing started in the playoffs. He signed that contract after that. Mm -hmm. So that tells me that the pressure the playoffs, when the fans came back, was that real first opportunity where him, as the lead guy, as the star, as the all-NBA player, was put on the spotlight, and he did not come through. He signs the contract going into the season, expectations. He knows JD said 50-burger, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he's like, uh-oh, I got to live up to that, and look, what, look what's transpired this season. So to me, I think the pressure of the contract, the pressure of expectations, the pressure of this market – everything into equation i don't want to talk about personal stuff because whatever that's that's you know that's his life that's that that's none of my business on court performance to me leads to pressure he's not built for new york and so that's why i think the knicks they're gonna have to figure this out because from the, from what, I, what i'm seeing if he's not moved cp hey like i said i look at evidence and the evidence what? is we're just letting him rock Hey, you can't hey, you can't do that. Hey, here's the thing. Um, and Begley did mention, you know, that that there was a bit of issues in the locker room in terms of his lack of accountability. They didn't mention him specifically, but you can, you know, put two and two together that they they were definitely referring to him. It's not good. He he definitely needs to get get it together. Um, as you said, you know, from the playoffs to the contract extension, it's a lot of pressure on him. I think he's feeling it and he's buckling under it between that. You know the the reaction to the fans. You know you you in the middle of a comeback, Al, and you down you down you still down in the game, but you want to take your attention away from the game and then go give a gesture to the fans. That's why when people were coming at me like, oh, or, or when Ash or, or whoever was debating was like, you know, fans give it to him. Why can't fans take it back? Because I'm like, yo, you're in the middle of a comeback. Like, where's your head mentally? For you to take your mind off of trying to get back into this game and win it to come back to the fans. And talk about talk about thumbs down with the fans. Like it just didn't make any sense. Like your energy is misplaced and mistimed when, when you're trying to win a game. So it, it's all bad, it's, especially when when they invested in him, and he's clearly folding under the lights now. As it pertains to the trade deadline, I mean, how many teams are really going to want that without you having to pay to get that off your hands right now? That's why I'm like, you know, is it, selling low on him right now. I don't, I don't see where they're gonna do it, and which is why what I what I was told and what what Begley was told was that look, they'll trade him if the right offer comes about. But at this stage in the game, I don't see how you trade him 
without having to compensate that team for taking a head case on us. Because right now, this guy's lost his, he's lost his marbles, bro. He's, he's just yeah. not there. Yeah, and I've been saying it since since he gave the fans that the fans the thumbs down. That's really when it started to all unravel. And my whole point is that I'm not one to boo. I get that fans boo, and it's going to happen. That's just the part of the game. It's going to happen. But as a player, especially when you're playing here in New York, it's like the bully, right? If a bully's calling you a name, you don't acknowledge that bully because once you acknowledge them. They know they got you and they're going to keep bothering you and they're going to keep bothering you and they're going to keep bothering you. And that's what's happened at this point. He acknowledged the fans. He said, Hey, I'm, I hear what all you guys are saying about me, everything from this, that, and the third X, Y, and Z. And once he did that, the fans that were already on him for the beginning of the season knew that they won. And now after you wrote the statement and doing this whole gesture, now I know that your focus is away from the game of basketball. Now I know that you're worried about your image mm -hmm. rather than the product on the court. And we were already worried about the product on the court because you weren't necessarily giving effort at the beginning of the season. You weren't always making your rotations. You weren't playing with that same intensity, with that same focus that you gave last season that helped lit, lit, lay, lead this team to being a 41-win team, four seed in the East, and we weren't expecting the same thing. We were just looking for the same effort. We're looking for winning. And we know that if you bring that type of energy where we had the Players' Tribune saying, guys would follow you to the gym when you landed in another city, get shots in, go work out, do, do all this. I'm not hearing that this season. That could be happening, but I'm not hearing that this season. We don't know what's going on in the locker room. And then when you have a coach that enables that, that enables his poor performance on the court, hasn't pulled him out quickly, uh, from a rotation, hasn't sat him down quickly. We know he's not going to get benched. That's not going to happen. He got paid. Right. He's he's the face of the franchise. I get it. He's, even though he's not named the leader, he is the leader. So it's not going to happen. But there has to be some repercussion for when you're not focused and you're not doing this and you're trying yeah, to lead this team. You 100%. Have, and, and the fact that Tibbs has even let this go on for so long, that's an indictment on Tom Thibodeau himself as well because you have to course correct. And if he's not traded, which... I get that. You don't want to sell low on Julius Randle. I, you don't want to have to move a piece just to move Randle unless it's really, really, really that toxic in the locker room. It has to be that toxic in the locker room that you get to move. They have to move this guy. But if he's not moved or if he gets moved later in the year, then Tom Thibodeau has to step in and somehow figure out how to course correct this. Because yeah, whether that's that pulling him out, pulling, giving him lesser minutes and sh showing, hey, you're not giving what I'm asking from you right now. Obi's going to get more minutes. All right. And it has to be something like that. Tom Thibodeau comes in here preaching. If you you gotta you gotta earn it. You gotta work for it. You gotta show it. Practice day in and day out, and get and you'll and you'll get those minutes. I don't know how you watch a guy who is more engaged with the fan base and, and then has now it, more engaged with his own head and how he feels, and you haven't done anything to correct that. So, I think, I, I, I well, I think that he he's just not made for New York, man, and. and if it's not going to work out here, it's there's nothing wrong with just parting and saying, "Hey, you got to go different. You got we got to separate uh, from this relationship at all." There's nothing let wrong me, with that. Let me ask you guys a question, um, because in business, as you know, you 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 know, in stocks, you you, you invest, you sell high, buy low, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But does it get to a point where you just keeping an investment? sometimes can continue to actually devalue your team devalue like does it get to a point where keeping somebody actually has more of a negative impact not only on himself but on everyone else around them that you just say you know what i know it may look a little lopsided in terms of the actual transaction but what we're actually going to get the value of him just not being here is going to count more than what we actually receive in a trade. Does it get to a point where in these next two weeks, you do everything under your power to get Julius Randle off this team? Or do you go into the fact of the, the status quo? You know, we can't trade him now because it's, it's at his lowest value. And I'll just wait till his value is high. Because then I ask this, mm -hmm. are you confident that he'll ever get to that point? I think you got to see. You can't get any worse now, bro. It's hit rock bottom. Can't get no worse. 
This is worse than his first season. This is worse than his first season, bro. It can't get any worse. You you know what I'm saying? I think you have to, as the coach, as Al said, you got to figure this guy, you got to get this guy right, right? Like like Fisdale would say, Moody, we got to get you right, kid. You got to figure out how to get this dude right, man. If, it, if, if this is going to take you the second half of the season, if it's a minutes reduction, if it's a role, re- you got to figure it out. What happens when D. Rose comes back? Does that help? You know, what, giving RJ the keys and having Julius play. Are there schemes that they could do to get him back into a flow, back into a rhythm? He's all over the place. Right? He doesn't know if he needs to be the guy, if he needs to be, you know, supporting cast. This and third. His defense is falling off a cliff. He's all over the place. I just, I, it can't get any worse for them right now. So to me, you might as well see if he can turn it around at least a little bit this second half of the season, and then you try to flip him. Maybe he comes back into good graces. It can't get any worse, bro. The, the only way I think you do that is either then you make a move at the deadline to get somebody next to him. You know, either you address this point guard position once and for all, or you switch up this offensive system and you have them blend in to me. And even, even with that, to me at this point, it's actually a prayer because like I said, mm-hmm. we're banking on him getting better, but here's another thing tomorrow on MSG against the Sacramento Kings, who's a team that, you know, I, th- I guess at this point is a toss up game the way we're playing. But I think going into the season, in the way the Kings have been, you would look at that game as a winnable game, especially at home, right? They're still in the middle of this playoff push, quote unquote. That's a game they have to win tomorrow. And if he doesn't play well tomorrow, this is going to get bad. The atmosphere at the Garden for him, every time he touches the ball, like this could get ugly. And how is a player that's already dealing with these issues going to improve under that atmosphere, under that environment, at his own home court. That's why to me it's a big, big question mark what you, Phoenix do with him here. You know, you bring up like you bring up the level of toxicity. And the first play that comes to my mind, granted, contract situation totally different, uh, is Kevin Love. And I just go back to like thinking when Kevin Love was uh I forget who the coach was that they got from uh Michigan, but he just didn't fit he didn't like what they were doing uh with that team whatsoever. I forgot how many seasons I think it was like one or two seasons ago, throwing the ball like during uh during game action, just you could just see he was livid and frustrated. And you could say, hey, we need to move this guy. Granted, now, Kevin Love has a contract that's not movable uh, compared to Julius Randle. Mm-hmm. But he's still there. And you see him this season. He's able to work his way back into good graces, playing his, playing well under J.B. Bickerstaff. I mean, we just saw him light us up, light Randle up uh, when we played him uh, early on Monday. And he was able to turn it around. Um I mean, another player we could talk about head case is is like Boogie Cousins, but Sacramento worked with him as long as possible. Went over to New Orleans, was playing well over there. I think it depends. It's just it, de- it depends on so much. It all honestly, you only move Julius Randle if you feel like you're getting fair value in return. And if you're not going to get fair value in return, I just can't see as like why do you want to? We're accumulating assets so that way we can make a better trade down the line. Why do I then want to give up? assets just to move a guy who's just not going to like get you anything like i don't want to sell super low on a guy for for it depends on the trade that at the end of the day it just comes depending on the trade depends on the trade and, bro and, and as much as i like i don't like what i'm seeing from randall right now like the the reality is that i'm just don't want to move him for the sake of moving him unless unless i say that the it's so toxic in the locks room that you yep. really need to move him. I and mean, we don't like, we won't know that, but it, unless it's like that extreme, I just don't want to move a guy who there is value in there. We know he's a good third option. Mm-hmm. We know it's somewhere in there. He's going through a rough stretch right now, but I just can't, I can't sell low on a guy like that. You got to think about it like this, the Kings, right? The Kings were said to be interested in him. They lost out on Simmons. The Kings are under pressure right now. They trying to make the playoffs. They, they just lost five straight games. Their GM is under pressure. They were trying to put all the pieces in for Ben Simmons. They're trying to make a splash. <laughs> to say that now they're going to settle for, for Julius to try to make this playoff push, you're going to have to compensate them. You're going to have to give them a draft pick. Even if you're trying to do a Julius for Fox swap. I don't even know if you could get Fox with Julius right now. I don't even know if you could do that. Because this, this GM for Sacramento, like I said, he's going to be under pressure, bro. 
and he, and he has to make a right move. I think they end up trying to go get Sabonis, maybe even Jeremy Grant. But Julius on that priority list, I can't. He's he's not. A, I can't see him being up there for them. Here's the problem with them getting Jeremy Grant is the Pistons have Cade, and because of salaries, you know, Fox has to be that guy. And if you're the Pistons, do you want to team up? You want a team you already have, which the jury's still out on um, Killian Hayes. Yeah, yeah. And you have Cade. So you want to add another non-shooter to that team? You know, I don't know where the fit is there. So then you look at uh, Sabonis. That might be their prize acquisition. Um, you know, and then and then you would think if you're the Pacers, like Fox is also, I know what we're saying about Julius, Fox is an interesting dynamic here. He goes to the Pacers. Then you have Brogdon right in front of him. So yeah. do the Pacers now are aggressive in the deadline and move Brogdon maybe to the Knicks? You never know, right? Yeah. Um, and even to us, as we say, Julius for Fox. I guess when you look at it, Fox is the better player. But at this point, man, the way Fox has been in terms of he's had a tough season. Um, he has a lot of question marks about him. He's still a young player. So I guess the value that Fox holds is the position that he plays, his age, and some of the attributes, speed, athleticism, that wins out versus what you're getting with Randall. Um, so I'm just saying like Fox, the Kings have a lot of pressure, but Fox is not the piece that maybe some people think in terms of everybody being like, you would think he would be a player that the Sixers would be interested in and that nah, they, they, I probably, they want yeah. Halliburton, bro. Halliburton just put 38 on their head, bro. Give, <laughs> they, give want, me, they want Halliburton, bro. Give me Halliburton on this. If, if the Knicks are trying to trade with the Kings, get me Halliburton before De'Aaron Fox. We got, we let me got ask no you, shot, man. I know it's not no it's no shot, but let me ask you this question. Shout guys. out Jay from Florida, the chat. <laughs> <laughs> that I need I need to put that no Halliburton on the sound bite. Shout uh, out Jay from Florida. Man. Shout out Jay from Florida. Well, well, let me ask you guys this question. Do you think Darren Fox is the twenty third best NBA uh player in the NBA? Twenty third? Twenty third. Probably, no, probably no. not. No. No way. All right. Because that's how he's getting paid right now. And when I think of trading Julius Randle for Darren Fox, if I'm making that, like if you are upset with Julius Randle's contract, he's actually getting paid like he's the 45th best guy in this league as a third option, which is around the area of like Drew Holiday and guys like that. When we talk about Darren Fox's contract, that's increasing every single year, right? And granted, the cap will go up next year. It's projected to be 119 mm -hmm. once they do the CBA again. They project, they project max contracts will be $300 million, so Steph's $200 million. If it were done again during that time, it would be $300 million. Do, if you don't think Darren Fox is the 23rd best player, regardless of the cap going up, why do you want to trade for this guy on this team as a point guard? I get it. We need a point guard. Yeah. But Darren Fox, does he offer you that? Does he really offer you the 23rd? You're, we're talking about he's getting paid close to the same amount as Kevin Durant right now. Is he well, playing even close? Sal salaries. Well, well then let's crazy, let's bro. get to it. Let's get to it. The offers on the table. Randall for Fox. You doing it? Absolutely. Because that sounds good. <laughs> but then, <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, that sounds bro. good. Like he's the twenty third best player. I get all that. But yeah. if the offers on the table, listen. Are we doing? At this point, I'm doing it. And yeah, you want to talk <laughs> about like Fox? Twenty seven percent from three. I'll I'll take a gamble on him. And and I'll I'll hope that Johnny Bryan can get him right. You know what I'm saying? I'll, I'll roll. I would roll the dice on a Fox Randall trade right now. To be quite honest with you, he's gonna get us downhill. He can finish at the rim, draw contact, mid range is on point. Yes, three point shooting questionable, defense at times questionable. I, I I would roll the dice on that. Do you guys want to roll run the offense? So if you got Darren Fox, who would you run the offense through? Through him, or do you want RJ to be the feature? Got to run it through Fox. Okay. Because Fox, I, I, it's weird. It's strange to say because I, I, me personally, and that's why the fit is a little, it, yeah. Because again, you bring him here, Tom Thibodeau, what type of, you know what I mean? Like yeah. if, if you have Obi, he, they're not looking to maximize his skill set. Are we, is there trust that this coaching staff, this specific head coach is going to be, is the coach to maximize yeah. a De'Aaron Fox? I don't know. That's very questionable. But if I had to pick, 
I would think you would have to create a system around Fox for the simple fact that you don't want him to be a standing guy and he can't shoot. Yeah, he can't that's shoot. Right. and He doesn't play well off ball either. That's you know, right. that's and that's where, like, for me, if I were going to uh, this would get more complicated where I would try try to move Julius and get Jalen Brunson, who I think would get a lesser contract and could play off ball while playing on ball. And it's kind of in that sphere of like Fred Van Vliet, where, you know, like, all right, do you want RJ to do a little bit of like playmaking for it? Do you want RJ to get most of the scoring? Sure. Jalen Brunson doesn't need to be that guy. But when you need Jalen Brunson to be that guy, as we see next to Luka Doncic, he can be that guy that can get you points. He can facilitate. He can play off ball. He can keep cutting. He'll set screens for you. He does all those things that Fox doesn't do. And I think he's looking for like an $80 million contract. I would take that if you can somehow facilitate that type of move over Darren Fox because Darren Fox as much as like yes he's got elite speed he can get downhill he's got a good mid-range jumper I know he's got questions on his defense right now but honestly I probably wouldn't be playing defense too if I was on the Sacramento Kings (laughs) so I get that I think he can improve on that I think he can improve on that as well the three-point shot we've seen that he's improved as well in that area this season once again, you're playing for the Kings. You're playing for a team that's just in, been in it's been in purgatory for the last couple of years. And your best stint with that team is got close to making the AC before the plan was even happened. And you didn't make it. I, I'm not. I don't hate Fox. I like him as a player. I just think with that max extension, I'm more weary. Just because if yeah. it doesn't pan out, I look at that as even a tougher contract to move than Julius Randle's right now. That's fair. That's fair. And then you you also have to look at it as you know, after that, you're going to pay RJ. You're potentially going to pay Cam. Mm-hmm. You might pay Mitch. You know, are, are you good with that as, as, your, as your three? You know, you're paying Cam 5-180, you paying RJ 5-180. This is why this deadline to me is so interesting because, like, the, the, per, the player that no one's talking about because – Julius is overshadowing everything and the way that that we're playing. I I remember we used to have, you know, daily shows about Mitch. We're going to (laughs) pay Mitch. What's going to happen with Mitch? Now that Mitch conversation is died down, but that is, that's going to, that's a big decision for this franchise, man. Like when you talk about, man, how many players can this team pay? And we still are looking to acquire talent in addition to that. And then you have Cam Reddish, who's, you know, his contract is almost, you know, is up in another year, but you still have to forecast that. So, you know, do we get a surprise and does Mitch get traded? If he doesn't, you think if Mitch is here after February 10th, I guess that means that we're looking to re-sign him. Like, it's it's just going to be such a fascinating yeah. um, trade deadline to me because, and, it, and, and I'm not saying that because I think they're going to make a lot of moves, CP. I just think either way, whatever result happens is going to say a lot about, you know, this front office. A lot of decisions to be made indeed. So to everybody in the chat, once again, hit that thumbs up button for you boys. What would you guys do? Leave us a comment in the chat and shout out to the replay gang. Leave us a comment in the comment section on the replay. Would you trade Randall for Fox as the parameters of the deal? Obviously, you know, you got to, there's other parts that have to be moved. You got to bring in more salary, honestly, because Julius Fox is at 30. So... Let us know as the parameters, as a key infrastructure framework for that deal. De'Aaron for Julius. Would you do it? Yes or no? Leave it in the chat. Leave a comment for the replay gang. All right, let's take some calls before we wrap. Great show. Uh, let me go to E-Crossover. E-Crossover, you up first. What's going on? Go ahead and unmute your mic. E-Crossover. Can't hear him. Okay, give me give me one second. E crossover, hang tight there. Let me see if I gotta restart the Discord. Fredo up next. Fredo, what's good? All right, let me give me one second here. Probably gotta restart the Discord. One second, fellas. So to everybody in the chat. Okay, let me let me restart the Discord. I'm gonna restart the Discord while I do that. Let me get to Truth from Arkansas. Truth, what's good? Hey, CP, you can hear me? Yeah, loud and clear. What's good, bro? Hey, y'all boys were tripping last episode. You and JD, <laughs> y'all boys was going out, buddy. <laughs> Yo, that that was that was like a down south debate, like like you and your homies, right? <laughs> hey, hey, for sure, then, man. But I ain't gonna say neither one of y'all was wrong, though. You know, it's just like this. 
you know, hey, you got your, you could, you know, your people, your calm Knicks fans, like we gonna get it together, like like like, like that's you, CT. Yeah. Then JD, like he tired, like he sick of, <laughs> he don't wanna do it. Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> then that drink had him faded. Hey, he was on one. <laughs> <laughs> Shout so, out to Truth. This might be a hey, this might be an unconventional take, but I had a lot of time to think about this. Let's go. Man, I think Julie is really just tanking the season, man. He's just tanking. Mm. He really got mad because they ain't give him the max deal. So he chooses not to give maximum <laughs> effort. He took a pay cut. <laughs> hey, for real, for real. <laughs> he took a pay cut for Kimber and Fournier as he's supposed to be helped. Then he learned the truth about why they drafted Obi to practically replace him. And I don't want Fox around unless Bagley come with it. And that's just the truth right there. Okay. Truth out. And he signed off with his name, Signature. Shout out to Truth from <laughs> Arkansas, man. That's my homies from down south. That was that was a classic down south battle, man. Me and my homies from H-Town used to battle like that, man. That was a classic. Shout out Danny Thomas in the chat. Fight out Super Chat. He says, trade Kemba Randall and Fournier for Fox, Barnes, and Bagley. We'll have to see how the salaries match up there, but I don't I don't see. Like I said, man, the Kings are looking for a difference maker to really get them out of the doldrums, man. They're trying to make the playoffs, man. Kings haven't been re- relevant since, since C-Web and Vladi and them <laughs> was running up and down the court. You know what I'm saying? Now, Vladi part ownership, you know. He, he's, he's trying to get something uh, respectable out there. Shout out to Halliburton, though, man. 38 points last night on uh, on the Sixers and a loss. Uh, yeah, we, we might end up losing that game tomorrow. Be careful. E crossover back on the Discord. E crossover, what's good? Yeah, you guys can hear me now? Yeah, better now. All right, cool. Awesome. Sometimes um, you, sometimes it's like Nintendo. You just got to reset the Discord. You yeah, know yeah, yeah. Reset that's it. Um, it always works. How you guys doing, though? How's everything going? Good, man. Good, man. What's going on? Yeah, yeah. Um, that, that super chat that you just read, that was the main thing I was going to talk about, too. Yeah. How um, the salaries, um, like, because uh, Harrison Barnes is on a two-year. He has two years left on his contract. You could take that deal and then deal Randall for Fox because it's 18 mil. Then you got uh, Fournier's there. That's close to that. Then you got Fox's 30. I think Randall's 20 this mm-hmm. year. And then, and then they could take um, either Kemba Walker's contract to make the salaries. I think you have to reach like 80% to make that trade happen and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So, you know, with Randall, they, 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 they've been eyeing Randall before the season, you know, started and stuff. But I know he's having his meltdown right now. Mm-hmm. And with him, it's just the effort, man. Like, he, he's, he's, not, he, he's not there. Um, the team's – I don't think the team is with him. You know, some of the things I've seen on Twitter, he's – Sitting out, not not gathering with the team, like he's just in his own head right now, and he's he's lost. I haven't seen a player break down like this so fast after a year that he had yeah. last year, yeah. ever in it's my true. lifetime. I've never seen a player break down like that. Like true. that, like this is bad. I don't know how he's gonna get himself out of it, but true story. And, um, man. the main thing, main thing the team really has to do is just work on uh just player development. <laughs> and this is actually this is actually one thing I was thinking about too and I was saying on, on my podcast on the first episode was mm-hmm. what was the conversation Leon Rose and Tom Thibodeau had last season before they had this, you know, amazing season that no one expected them to have. Did he bring Tom Thibodeau in to develop players? Like was that the first intention? But then when they had that wonderful season, Tom Thibodeau thought to him, you know what, this may be the time for me to actually build a championship team and win now. And now you're starting to see how he's playing more veterans than the rookies because he wants to see himself win a chip as a head coach. You know, he's only won one as an assistant and he's not getting any younger and, he, and he's a basketball head. So he wants to win so badly that he's not seeing that you got to develop these guys and let them play more like OB, you know, as he's playing Grimes more. But I want to see what Deuce McBride could do. Everybody, everybody wants to see what Cam can, but I definitely understand that. You know, with Cam, it's like he, he just came in, so I could see where his philosophy is with that. Yeah. But like JD said, man, after the trade deadline, if he's not getting at least 25 minutes, okay, it's gonna it's gonna be something. So I think <sighs> that trade with Fox, with Fox and uh, Randall, mm-hmm. and then, uh, Fox and Randall, and then Harrison Barnes comes in, which is a good addition. He's shooting 41 41 percent from three, you get okay. a decent shooter. Then you get Cam coming off the bench for like 25 minutes. I think I that could work. But appreciate let's see what happens. Appreciate All the call. Right. King Kings ain't doing that, man. Fredo, what's good, bro? Gentlemen, can you hear me? Yeah, loud and clear. What's good? All right. Thanks for taking my call as always. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I've never been a brown noser, but I got to give uh, 
some props to UCP for taking these tomato bullets with your cam tape. Uh, you bro, all. It's nothing. It's nothing, man. Man, I'll, I'll go one in two thousand. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotta bring more to the gun show, man. Y'all bringing pea shooters to the gun show. I'm out here breaking right. down business like bricks. I'm breaking it down for you, man. I'm breaking CP, it down. CP, how, how was it you said I, I was here when the team won 17 games or whatever it was? That's it. <laughs> bro, like, I was I'm, here I've been when here that since happened. Anything, anything else bro. is. Every game, every show. You know what I'm saying? It's nothing. Well, C- well CP, you're 100% right. And I don't want to, I don't want to, um, copy or say what you said again. I want to add to it. Mm-hmm. I think, I think that this locker room, people, a part that people are missing is that, this locker room is at a state right now where things could go things could go either way. And I think that if Tibbs comes out and tells, because listen, the starting lineup is the starting lineup. Until guys get traded, we all know that these are who Tibbs is going to play. So if Tibbs mm-hmm. comes out and tells Obi and Cam and then looks, uh, not Cam, uh, Grimes, and then looks McBride and Tibbs in the face and says, no, nah, no, nah, you guys ain't getting minutes. We got to give Cam minutes. After he's yeah. been preaching this whole time, that you got to earn to play. I yeah, mean, but it, bro, it's, it, it is, oh, but it's, has, it's politics, bro. McBride and, and Sims are second round picks, my guy. I understand. We don't owe that, them but anything. What has Cam, but what has Cam done? Who is Cam, like, people are acting Listen, like Cam is Paul George? Well, you know, like. Well, he, but bro, you, you're trying to see if he could maximize that potential. He was a lottery pick. That's what they paid I hear, for. I, the last, I, I, I kind of disagree. I kind of feel like we don't really owe Cam anything. I'm gonna be honest. I'm not being hard on the guy. I want him to be it's, successful. It's not, no, don't get me wrong. It's not to say that they owe him because I don't think they owe him. But they made a trade with a first round pick and a Kevin Knox to bring him in. They intend to evaluate him. It's not to say that they owe him, but they want to see if they could catch lightning in a bottle with him. I like the and trade. What you and what you said right there, it's kind of you kind of led right into my last point. Mm-hmm. Is that I, I uh, when when we made the trade, I called and I said, "Listen, I don't think that he was really worth the first round pick because he wasn't getting. He was third string stuck in the Hawks, right?" I said, "Maybe we mm-hmm. could have got him for two. And everybody killed me. Said, "Nah, nah, the first round pick was worthless. You know, it, it had no value." And now I see a lot of people saying, "Well, we traded a first round pick. We have to play him." So which one is it? Was the first round pick worthless and it didn't have no value, or mm-hmm. is the first round pick valuable? Now we have to play him. Well, so, like, it's, it's 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 value r- in relation to the amount of assets that they already have. They got a lot of picks, bro, including their own, and they didn't give up their own in this. But at the same I, time, it it still is it's it's not worthless per se. But you still intend to to see what he can do. You don't want him just walking out the door and you gave up a, a first round pick. Don't matter have, if that first round pick have, turned out have, to be. But the Knicks, say it again. The Knicks have the Knicks have control for a long time. You know, like he he's a restricted free agent. He's yes, not going anywhere unless the Knicks wanted to. Well, that's that's why I say we got time. It's a year and a half. So you have this season, rest of this season, then you have all the next. Then you got to figure it out in 2023 whether or not you're going to um, bring him in. But bro, appreciate the call, bro. We're going to go on to the next. Michael on the Discord. Michael, what's good? I'm done, bro. That, that call was ass, bro. I'm sorry. Oh, but I'm not going to sh- shit on my fucking... Hey, um, hey, hey, I, hey, I, hey, Michael. Hey, it's, nah, it's a family hey, show, hey, man. You. It's a family show, bro. Come on, man. You a, you a kid, bro. It's a family show, man. Come on, bro. You know the nah, protocol, I, man. Come on, man. Sit, I'm not going to just sit down and wait for Cam Reddish to all of a sudden for the last week of next season to play. There's no point in just saying, oh, f- from a fortune teller, oh, okay, he's going to play now. He's good. He's an all-star. I mean, even five minutes is good. You can't just make him a, no, a new Kevin Knox. I, I I can't deal with it, bro. Like, the the, the kids are getting abused. You need to call a child protective services out here, bro. Like... <laughs> Like I, I, I'm just mad with this, bro. And ever since we got Cam, it's like I'm just mad. Like I, I can't deal with it, bro. It's the same thing. It's ruining our franchise, bro. It's, it's, it's holding us back years and years. Nah, man. Like, it's holding. It's, it, I mean, it's holding us back. You can't it's keep not, playing Alex Church. Well, even five minutes, like he's just, he's playing garbage time minutes. Not even on the on, on the Bucks. We gotta lose by thirty for him to even play in in, in the the six minutes of the fourth quarter. He's not even playing the beginning of the fourth quarter when we're down thirty. That's the we we have to be down thirty points to even make him play ten minutes. Okay. At least playing five minutes, like guys, not big deal. But if you don't play him at all, then what's the point of getting him? Well, they, I've been they, just stuck it, in my head thinking it, about this, and like I know the patience thing, but like you'll see, Randall's doing good. I mean, Kemba is needs on life support. I mean, look, like. You can't just for one game do like playing for five minutes or just see what happens. Yeah. Like, I mean, 
like Evan Fournier is not doing good. You can cut his minutes down. It's like you can still run the same rotation, but with less minutes. Okay. All right. Pre- appreciate the call, man. We, we might have to discuss a suspension here for a Yeah, my, Michael came in hot, bro. He, I, he didn't even hot. give me time to like, adjust the volume, okay? Like, come on, bro. It's a family <laughs> show, man. It's still 11 o'clock. You know what I'm saying? Drop it. Drop it. F-bombs yeah. going for the jugular right out the gate. Woo! Simon, Simon you? if you listen to this, we, we might have to throw the parental advisory uh, 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 button on there, man. Next investment is the is the mute button. Yeah, that's how you that's how you know we all stress right now. <laughs> well, it's a family Everybody show, just... man. I, I, I try to protect the language for people like him, and he he coming in hot, bro. <laughs> shout, shout out to Mike, man. Love, love his passion, though. Definitely love his passion. King Deej, I see you on the on the on the chat. I'm, we're gonna go last with King Deej. Uh, JJ up next. JJ, rapid fire. Let's go. JJ going once. I don't know if the switchboards are down. Oh, no. This is Josh from Texas. Josh, what's going on? All right. Hey, like, uh, I don't know. Like, I think we, to be honest, I think Randall makes the whole team play bad. Like, when Randall is playing bad, mm-hmm. the whole team plays bad. And in the sense of Randall don't let nobody else shine. Like, He'll dri- like he's doing his little dribble like he a point guard, and he let nobody else shine. Like he makes Kimba Walker look like a like a scrub, and we mm-hmm. we all know that Kimba Walker is not no scrub. Right. He he's an all star. I mean he hasn't made it since twenty twenty, but he's an all star. And we not and we know that Fournier mm-hmm. even though he's sometimes he needs man. like two or three shots to make a three. Yeah. Uh, he's not a scrub. So I feel okay. like Randall makes the whole team play really bad except RJ. Okay. Appreciate the call, man. Appreciate the call. Well, look, they, they, they certainly have to get it together, right? We know that. Um, and and a lot of it is on him. A lot of it is on his shoulders to help make this team better. You know, people don't like to talk about last year, but last year he did. That's just point blank, period. Uh, are they a better team without him? No, I don't think that. I don't think that. You heard what Jeff Van Gundy said uh, on, on the Heat telecast about the second unit. He said, look, second unit looks great. They just don't have a guy that can get, get buckets. We missed Derrick Rose. Yeah. You know, we missed Derrick Rose. Yes, the energy's great, but you still got to put the ball in the hole, man. So that, that's where that's where Randall comes in. That's where Rose comes in, and that's why they had so much success uh, last year. Because Randall took him to that point, and Rose finished the job. They just couldn't do it in the playoffs. You doing everything to get Jalen Brunson? Not everything. Not everything. I like Brunson, though. I definitely like Brunson. I found something. Let me know if this changes your you guys' opinion. Yeah. Um, found some stuff on on Jalen Brunson. This is not including the game that they had tonight. They lost to the Orlando Magic, by mm. the way. <clears throat> Jalen Brunson is shooting 71% at the rim. Yeah. Obi Toppin is also shooting 71% mm-hmm. at the rim. Mm-hmm. So that's that's pretty pretty insane there. Mm-hmm. Uh points per pick and roll as the ball handler. Jalen Brunson is number 2 in the NBA at a point point uh 03. The number one guy is Donovan Mitchell. Mm-hmm. You have McCullum in that. You have DeRozan in that list. Another thing, Jalen Brunson ranks second amongst all NBA players at his position in the NBA at scoring at the rim on mm-hmm. drives. On drives, fifty-eight percent. Only, right? only Giannis mm-hmm. shoots a higher percentage driving mm-hmm. to the hoop in mm-hmm. the half court. Uh, when you talk about what else here, um, ten games, ten games straight when Luca was wasn't was out. Jalen Brunson averaged 20 points per game, almost eight assists, two turnovers, 38% from three, 56% from two. Number one in the NBA in field goal percentage on drives to the rim. Number two in the NBA on field goal attempts on the pick and roll. So, you know. Listen, I, I, I would love to have him. It depends on yeah. the price, though, bro. You know, when I saw that, price. also, Jalen Brunson would rank third on the Knicks mm. in spot-up field goal percentage behind Grimes and Fournier and second in field goal percentage off screens, off screens only to Grimes. Uh, he's 19th in the entire NBA at field goal percentage on pull-ups. So if they so, want Grimes, you putting him in a deal? Let, let's nah, say da- Dallas is because they could lose Finney Smith, right? So they're getting ready to lose. They could lose one of their wings. Dallas comes back and says, "Look, sign and trade, or 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 or, or a trade deadline trade, 
give us Quentin Grimes. I don't th- I don't think Tibbs is doing that, but you know I'm I, I'm giving them what. I'm giving not him. Oh, chill, I'm chill, chill. Chill. <laughs> I was about to say you. You, you, you died. The whole chat was the whole chat was about to no, blow no, up. No, no, I was going to say. Were the I was going to say if I had to choose, if I had to choose between the young guys, because you have to give up a young guy for for Jalen Brooks. Like, yes. like, like you gotta now, let's keep, stop the two K stuff. You gotta happy, right? Like you, you would, you would probably want to include Burks there to replace Tim Hardaway, but that's not going to get a deal. You got to include a young guy. Mm-hmm. To me, that young guy is probably uh, quickly. I do it. Is you replacing guard with guard? Yeah, I do it. Yeah, I do it. You got to pay to play, bro. Because if you're giving up Grimes, that replace Hardaway, but you're giving Grimes and quickly. I'm not doing it. No, I'm not no, even no, doing no. Grimes. I don't know. I don't know. I'd rather do. You, I'd rather I do, do quickly, quickly and, Burks. and the pick. You're gonna yeah. have to do quickly, Burks and a pick, something along those lines. And then you have to receive some one of their veterans to make the salary work. Yeah, yeah. If you're <laughs> if you're adding Burks, I would do that. And the, yeah, for sure. And the thing about Dallas right now is that they're going to be in the luxury cap. So it's going to be pretty tough for them to sign because they got Finney Smith, who they have to resign, right. and Jalen Brunson. Yeah. So even if they sign these guys, they'll be paying like their uh, championship contending team, and obviously they're not. Yeah. So it's it's plausible they could get Jalen Brunson uh, in that type of deal, and they might want a young guy in return just to balance out the book. So if you're trading someone like quickly for them, that might work out, especially when your point guard already is luca having an outstanding you... year, no doubt, man. He's having a great you know, year. every every contribution I've Provided on this platform was about to just oh yeah you would, yeah you oh yeah it. oh yeah you're out you're out the window Jeff, like Jazzy Jeff bro like Jazzy Jeff man. <laughs> Isaiah <laughs> Ellis in the chat was like JD was about to go off the deep end there <laughs> so salute to everybody in the chat hit that thumbs up on feed boys what do you guys in the chat think about Jalen Brunson man leave a comment in the chat uh, for those of you watching on the replay gang leave a comment in the uh, video later on if you guys made it to the end of this video if you're part of the replay gang man just just throw a hashtag replay gang in the comment section so that we know that you're in here repping and for those of you uh in the chat if you guys are new in the chat leave us a hashtag new i saw someone coming with the uh with the username new york knicks team hashtag new Uh, i see dave a in the chat says cp longtime watcher off of xbox so i can never get in on the chat what's good shout out to dave salute to you dave and yeah, if you guys are new, leave us a hashtag new as we wrap up. Couple more calls, three more calls. Let's go to JJ from Brooklyn. JJ, what's going on? Yo, CP, JD, Alex, what's going on? Yo, what's How's good? everyone doing? What's good, bro? How you feeling? Chilling, chilling. Doing well. Thanks. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Uh, a couple points. First, mm-hmm. the thing is with this deadline coming up, these guys, you got to get rid of these vets. If I could get rid of Randall, I absolutely would, even though I don't think that's going to happen. Mm-hmm. But Burks, Fournier, these guys get all got to go because it's addition by subtraction. And the thing, even with Randall, I'm not looking for a big return. When you're trying to get addition by subtraction, in my opinion, the return doesn't matter. I'm not looking for a ton. To me, getting rid of these contracts is the, is a win in itself. I'm not looking for... I'm not looking for a stud point guard like some people think we're going to get for Randall. With the way he's playing, we're not going to get that type of return. If we could get rid of these contracts and get slim returns back, I'm okay with it. And the thing that I hate with this position that we're in right now, right now we're two games even behind the 10th for the 10th spot, the last playing spot. Mm -hmm. So we're done, in my opinion, with our schedule, the second hardest and the teams near us. They Mm -hmm. all have easy remain schedules. So I can't even front. I'm... I'm heavy on take it on nowadays. So <laughs> would I love to have Jaden Ivy? Absolutely. But the thing that I hate with this position, this is a position I hate being in where you're not bad enough to get like that top three, top four pick, and mm. you're not good enough to be a real threat. This is the worst position. I hate this position. Like when I'm looking at take it on the team right now, I think we have the 10th worst record and the team with the eighth worst record, we're way behind in terms of take standing. standing. Mm-hmm. So, we're going to be in that all too familiar picking eighth or ninth. And this isn't, this isn't the NFL where you're going to get a star there. Usually if we're not in the top three, top four, you're not getting that type of game changer. And this draft, it's not a point guard draft. The, my favorite point guard right now, I don't know if you guys know of him, is Ty Ty Washington out of Kentucky. Mm-hmm. I think he's going to be really good. But, you know, to get a Jaden Ivey, you're going to have to be in that top three, top four. Unless we make a move up, we're going to have to have a lot of luck in that lottery because – I think where we are, we're going to end up with around the ninth or 10th worst record. You know, I just hate being in that position where you're not getting that game changer, you're not getting a top four pick, and you're not a threat to do anything. 
You know, it should just be the rest. If Tib doesn't want to go young, fire him and let Johnny Bryan coach the rest of the way because I'm tired of seeing – I don't want to see these vets when we're – you know, pretty soon we'll probably be five, six games out of the last playing spot. Just go young. It should be starting tomorrow. Go with the youth movement okay. tomorrow. All right. We're done. This season's done. All right. Appreciate Thanks appreciate for taking the call. The call. You guys, appreciate it. Michael White from Ohio. Michael White, what's going on? What's going on? How you doing, man? I'm doing good. Hey, uh, I agree with you on Randall as far as uh, mm -hmm. him maybe sitting down some, mm -hmm. but he really needs to get like a week off, <laughs> you know, and uh, maybe just call it reconditioning. Yeah. For for real. I mean, because he's got an issue. Now, I don't know when he, where he grew up. I know he did grow up in Dallas, mm -hmm. but I don't know what part. And there's a lot of those kids had lead damage. And a and lot what? of those age lead kids, damage? I, uh, lead, lead damage. Okay. Lead poisoning. Okay. And he acts like a lot of those kids were acting when I lived down there. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I can't, of, but know, I, I can't draw that conclusion, man. But I definitely appreciate the call. We we just got to keep it keep it pushing. Um, you definitely you could definitely call back tomorrow after the game. King Deej, go ahead and, and wrap up. <laughs> yeah, dang man, yo yo JD, what what's in that drink from the other night? Everybody out here going crazy. Yeah, and my man <laughs> Mikey cursing. Got Frito, got got somebody talking about the what's in Texas water. Like, oh man, oh, <laughs> he, he 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 went by he went in environmental OB. Like, I, I you know I can't I just I can't draw that conclusion, man. It's just not a not a you know convo I can jump in. But go ahead, man. All, all respect, go ahead. CP, all respect, man. You're mm -hmm. a good host, man. Listen, Appreciate listen. It. I'm gonna keep this quick, short, and let's get wrap up and get out of here, man. Mm -hmm. I hear the I hear everything about Randall for Fox, man. And I hear everybody in the chat, but y'all got to understand where we coming from. When you traded somebody that was your best player, you're not at an advantage. And yes, <laughs> yes, yes, I, I would do Randall for Fox in a heartbeat. But y'all don't understand it's so much more than just Randall and Fox. It's Randall, a pick. Mm -hmm. You gotta go take, uh, gotta gonna to take, probably going to have to take um, uh, Harrison Barnes' contract back. Yes. You're yes. going to have to give them something in order to, for them to even do that. That's it's too much. It's too much, man. Listen. I understand. I understand truly what it is about Randall. I understand, but I, I don't see that happening. Me so neither. I'm gonna go realistic. Realistic trades when you when you talk about trading for Randall. When you talk about trading Randall, and yeah, everybody's talking about whatever you get out is better than what he's giving in. When I'm talking, when I say Randall, I'm talking like the Christian Woods of the NBA. Like that's what you might get in return. Mm -hmm. Now, wh whether or not they want to call those people up and send Ju Julius back to Texas is one thing or another. But I just want everybody to understand that when you're talking about trading Randall, you're not talking about an advantage of that. You're losing a talent, and you're giving up more than you what you think. As far as Brunson, man, I hear what you guys are saying about Burks and IQ for Brunson, but my whole thing is like, I, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I just feel like Brunson is Brunson will play good with RJ and Cam, so that that's that's the combination that, I, that everyone, I think, realistically could see. But to me, he's... He's just he's Kemba. He's he's a he's Kemba. I mean, he gives you more effort on defense, but he's still a small guard. I don't know. I just don't, I don't see how that's going. And I just want to say one last thing. Mm -hmm. I listen. I've been on a Cam boat. I understand everybody's frustration. Trust me. I was posting this kid nonstop the week that trade rumor came out. But I'm going to side with CP. Mm -hmm. This season, this season is not. It, this season comes down to the trade deadline. So once trade deadline comes, like like JD always says, that game against the Warriors that night in Oakland, we're gonna get smoked, mm -hmm. whether the vets are here or not. That's when everybody could jump off the bridge. But you gotta understand, man, this is not Tibbs is not letting go of the rope. So just one more week, y'all. It, it's next Wednesday. Yeah. I get it. The I, I hear y'all about the Kings game tomorrow. I don't think I right, listen, if Fox plays, because they've been getting smoked, they're on a six-game loser streak. And all due respect to us, we shouldn't feel like we should beat anybody. Like yep. that Kings team, that's a high power offense. The gym, they don't bro. play no defense. Might so I just want to, like, I just want to let everybody know, man. I get it with Cam, I get it with Randall, but you guys got to be realistic. You're not getting Fox for Randall without giving up more. You're gonna have to give and up just a lot give it a week. More. Yeah, yeah, yeah. CP, and just give it a week for Cam, man. I'm, I'm on the Cam boat, man. But give it a week, one more week, y'all. Okay. One more week. King, Peace and love, y'all. King Deej, preaching. Patience. Okay. All right. Salute to King Deej. 
Salute to uh, Will Latham, Team Hashtag New. Jai Davis, appreciate you, Jai. Just lost the rest of the news. Uh, where else? Salute to salute to everybody that came through, man. We had almost 2,000 people in here. Let's get those likes, likes up. Hit that like button. Hit that thumbs up button for you boys. Back at it tomorrow night. Knicks versus Kings. Let's go. Uh, Al, any last words? Can't wait until February 10th, man. Can't wait until the trade deadline. <laughs> All right, no doubt. Weekly uh, predictions. Well, this week? Okay. I know we're trying to duck it because times are tough, but yeah, got to do it. So this week we have, <clears throat> let's, let's, uh, let's line them up. This week, let me, let me put it up on the screen for those at home. So this week we have Sacramento, Memphis, and the Lakers. What's up with LeBron? What's, what's, what's LeBron's deal these days? He's making movies? Is he playing? What, what's going on? <laughs> he hasn't played the last two games. They just lost to the Hawks. Did you, I, feel like I, I know the quote I heard was as, as long as his knee, I guess his knee is a little swollen. So yeah. And like, if, if, it's, if the swelling doesn't go down, he's not going to play. That's what I was saying. I'm going one and two. Surprise win in La La Land because we got more fans in there. I'm going one and two. Losing two at home. Sorry, man. I don't think we're going to beat the Kings or, or the Grizzlies at home. But a, a shocking win led by Julius and RJ. I'm going another 20-point game, Julius and RJ game against the Lake Show. Yeah. Go up against a defense right. uh, that can't stop right. the nosebleed right now. Lakers. Lakers. All right. One and two. I'm going to go the optimistic route. I'm going to go two and one. Okay. All right, all right. What, what are you looking at? Are you looking at uh... King? I'm looking at the Kings, and I'm looking at the Lakers. Okay, uh, we're gonna we're gonna get smoked by the Grizzlies. Memphis might blow us out <laughs> by thirty. We might we'll get, get rocked. Smoked. They're rolling, man. We Josh just got. He, he's in the he's in the starting rotation right now for oh, the All Star break. Lord, he's bro. coming in. He's gonna put on a show, bro. Did you see the play when when Desmond Bain pinned somebody yes. on the Wizards, and then they threw yes. an alley to Jai who caught the wood? Oh my lord, bro. Dude, Jai's bro. box office just straight box office, Crazy. man. Crazy. I'm going. I'm going one for two, man. JD, how you looking? I think the only game we have a chance of winning is tomorrow against <laughs> the Kings. Wow. Because yo, Halliburton was looking kind of kind of scary out there last night, well, bro. I think it's concerning when you say that. Yeah, we're gonna uh, when you know if we we're gonna beat the Kings, we can't beat the Kings. They're three and twelve in the last fifteen games. To me, that's the most winnable game. Regardless, we can't beat them at home. Yeah, I just think I just think this stretch is is just things. I just don't like the energy. I don't like the way things are looking. Me neither. I feel like the coaching staff knows. I feel Thibodeau knows. Like they're running the same starting five. You know, we should we miss the first two shots tomorrow. The fans are already gonna get grumpy because mm. they just hate. They don't like what's happening. Mm -hmm. They don't like that starting unit. Mm -hmm. That's not what they want to see. So I think the fans are going to be very uneasy at the first, you know, set of mistakes. And I just don't think this team is in the right place. I got them going 0-3 this week. 0-3. Okay. All right. I think that's realistic. But what do you guys think in the chat, man? Leave us your predictions for this week. At home against the Kings. At home against the Grizzlies. And then in Los Angeles for the Lakers. Yo, have the league give us Utah and Denver on back-to-back -back nights. Come on, bro. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. It's true straight out. That's, two, that's two the worst of these part. three games are national television. Oh. Wednesday on uh, ESPN and that first uh, game in LA on that road trip is on ABC. So the, on the, I think those teams are going to want to play well too. And then we got 10 more nationally televised games after that. Mm. Well, we don't know yet the way we going. They're going to start scratching those games <laughs> off. We might get flexed. <laughs> yeah. We might get flexed for like ESPN the Ocho, bro. Real talk. <laughs> <laughs> Real talk. ESPN 3. You know what I'm saying? Internet only. Shout out to uh, David Clodio. It says, uh, bring Rokas. Toss Kemba. He balling in the Euro League. Yeah, Rokas is balling, boy. We got to see, man. Bring him back to the G League. I mean, back to Summer League. See how he plays. Bring him in preseason. See how he plays. You know, we got to temper expectations. But Rokas is definitely playing well. I will start bringing some scouts in to talk about him later on this season. Uh, DM in the chat says, don't deny the tank, CP. Well, listen, I said it on Twitter. I said, after next week, we might be rolling out the tank. So, Get your fatigues ready. Get the dust off the fatigues. 
Call up Moody A, see what Moody A and them is doing. You know what I'm saying? Oh my Get God. Get some dust off the fatigues out of the closet <laughs> out. Who's the, who's the tank commander for this team if we had to go that direction? Oh, it's Julius. <laughs> okay, just about to make sure. Just make it short. <laughs> Look no further than, than your leader, number 30. Spinning and not winning. Can I say one more thing? Yeah. It's gonna be it's gonna be bad tomorrow watching Halliburton get Oof. 30 plus Oof. minutes and Obi most likely get Oof. 12 minutes the most. Yikes. Like that sight to me. It, it's just, it's just gonna be, it's gonna be sad for you. Oh, you need some aspirin, bro. I got some aspirin for you. It's all Oof. good. Val Burton dropped thirty. I'm blaming Jay from Florida. We, we, we banning Jay from Florida. Val Burton dropped thirty. <laughs> Jay from Florida suspended for a week. Real talk. Shout out to Christian Cruz. He says Randall sign and trade for Brunson makes too much sense this all season. Also, don't count out Minnesota going after Randall. Power forward is the position of need for them. I mean, look, I, I was told there's about five, so I think like six to eight teams in his market. But like King D said, we're going to have to pay for in, in most of these situations. You're going to have to pay because his, his stock couldn't get any lower. Uh, Josh says Mike must have taken lace melatonin flagrant too. And Mike came in hot. Isaiah Ellis says the Knicks need a stretch five center more than a point guard, especially with Rose McBride as a vet in the future. Uh, I disagree. I don't necessarily see McBride as a future, and I think we need a point guard badly. McBride has a spot here. I don't know if it's as a future as a point. Uh, stretch five center would be more of a luxury. He says, talk about the impact of Fox and a potential Donovan Mitchell deal. Well, if we get Fox, we can patch him up and go get Mitchell, hopefully. Um, David Claudio says, if Jazz exit first round, does Donovan ask to come home? I don't know. That's a lot of media speculation. I think the media just needs something to talk about, especially the national media as, as it pertains to the Knicks. We do, we really don't know how he feels about Utah and his future there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you can draw all the connections, but everybody's got connections to New York through six degrees of separation. I can't necessarily just say that it's a foregone conclusion that, that he'll want out. I think it's more wishful thinking, but we'll leave the light on for him. Um, true story, Jace is fair value. At like he's a top 20 player fair value it, I, I didn't really get that one true story appreciate it though Devon Cerna says we've we've seen during this rough stretch Randall was able to get the ball going downhill for easy buckets I don't know why we don't look to do that more for him. a lot of inconsistencies in, in how he's utilized for sure Melvin uh, I got Melvin Anthony Mano says um, no, I got that one Eric Nefron says uh, take him to church JD Willie Cruz says, if we were winning, I would agree with you, CP. You sound like you're on the Tibbs payroll. Okay. Gamba says, uh, he had no problem benching Kemba. Now the rotation is untouchable. Nah. Kenneth Lane says, I believe Tibbs is, is keeping the lineup the same to show the front office how stupid it is to have a starting lineup with Kemba at Evan as he guards. Uh, Eric Nefron says, Tibbs, who I trust? Me. New York, appreciate it. And uh, yeah, that's it, man. Oh, one more came in. Shout out to S. Po25. He says, Knicks are winning tomorrow. I'll be at the game. Knicks are a perfect 13 0 at MSG when I attend. Shout out S. Po. Call in after the game. You want all your reactions. If you guys are at the game, call in. Tag us on your Instagram stories. Tag us on your Instagram stories watching this show. You know, we always repost people watching this show, you know, saluting us on Instagram. So go ahead and do that. Shout out to the Replay Gang. Leave us a hashtag, Replay Gang. Um, in the comment section as well and as usual man remember this show is brought to you by Manscaped fellas don't get outside get caught lacking it is winter time but hey you may want to take a little bit off the top man go to manscaped.com promo code KFTV for 20% off plus free shipping you got the lawnmower 4.0 Alex and JD my rep at Manscaped just told me they got some, some new joints coming your way so be on the lookout for that in the mail the new products are flying off the shelves at Manscaped, man. Like I said, you got the shampoo and conditioner, the body wash, the ball toner. Some of you guys like that ball deodorant, you know what I'm saying? Keep it funky. But uh, the Walmart 4.0 is the, is the flagship product, man. So you can't lose great deals, great products for every day, man. Number one men's grooming tool below the waist. Comes to the number one show for the fans by the fans. Manscaped.com. Promo code KFTV for 20% off plus free shipping. Remember, these shows are available in audio podcast format. All the major podcast platforms, you can't miss it. If you're an Apple podcast listener, leave us a review. You know, these things go a long way for us. So when we keep telling you, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. That's another thing where you can support us. Leave a review on Apple Podcasts. Definitely helps us out. So that's the story. And uh, yeah, man. 
See you guys tomorrow night. Knicks versus Kings. Let's go. Hit that thumbs up button for you boys. We out of here.